Hello and welcome back. In this video, we'll be looking at the solution to question 9 of the May June 2022 CSEC Mathematics Paper 2. And the first part of the question is a circle theorem question. We have H, J, K, L, and M are points on the circumference of a circle with center O. M, K is a diameter and is parallel to H, J. Also, MJ is equal to JL, and the angle JMK is equal to 38 degrees. And that is information we have, and we are to use that information to calculate or to state the value of HJM. HJM is the angle here, and we can use the fact that uh, the diameter is parallel to this line here so this diameter is parallel to this line and because it is parallel we end up with a situation where we have angles between parallel lines so this angle is alternate to this angle and because it is alternate we know that alternate angles are equal to each other so hjm is equal to 38 degrees by that reason the next one MJK is equal to 90 degrees. If we complete the triangle here, then we realize that we have a right angle triangle here. But to make sure that we do, we realize first that MK is a diameter. And this angle, MJK, is drawn on the diameter. And because of that, we can say that the angle in the semicircle is a right angle. Hence, it is 90 degrees. Otherwise, we can use the fact that MOK is a straight angle here, and um, this angle MJK is drawn on that diameter again using the fact that the angle at the center of the circle, MOK, which is 180 degrees, is twice the angle on the circumference, which would also make it 90 degrees again. So there are many explanations for that one. Moving on to the other part of the question, we have to find each of the following, MLJ. So MLJ is here, it's already marked. To find MLJ, we need to find this angle here, MKJ. And we find MKJ by using the fact that MJK is a right angle triangle, which means that this angle, 38 degrees, is complementary to this angle here. So JMK plus JKM is equal to 90 degrees. And we use that to work it out. So we simply say that 90 minus 38 would give, give us 2 from 8 from 10 there gives us 2. And 3 from 8, 5. So we end up with 52 here. And because this is 52, this also is 52. So angle MLJ is 52. And we can use the fact that angles in the same segment are equal to each other. So we can use that. Um, notice the line here. If we should just draw this line here, then you'll see that here is one segment of the circle and there's the other segment. And both of these angles are drawn in the same segment, just highlighting it so that you can see it a bit easier. There angles in the same segment. Those two, These two angles are in the same segment. <clears throat> Moving on to LJK. LJK, that's LJK, that's this tiny piece right here. Just gonna color it right there. That's the little piece that we want. So if we want to find LJ K, we need to make use of the fact that um, this triangle here, MLJ, 
MLJ is isosceles. And because it is isosceles, then this larger angle here is going to be equal to 52 degrees. So we have that this angle now is going to be 180 minus 2 times 52, which gives us 180 minus 104. And that, of course, gives us 76 degrees. So this angle here is 76 degrees. And now we, we pay attention to the fact that this angle here is a right angle. So MJK is a right angle. MJK equal 90 degrees. And we already know this part of it. MJK is made up of MJL and LJK. So to find LJK, we simply subtract 76 from 90. And here we get a 4, 7 from 8, we have 1. And so this part of the angle here would be equal to 14 degrees. So LJK is equal to 14 degrees. The last one, JHM, JHM, that is the angle here at the top. We can find that angle by using the idea that, um, let's just draw something that you can see easily. This shape here is a cyclic quadrilateral. And one of the properties of a cyclic quadrilateral is that opposite angles are supplementary. So this angle is supplementary to this, meaning that um, LHJHM, JHM plus 52 is equal to 180 degrees. So JHM plus 52 is equal to 180, and therefore JHM is equal to 180 minus 52, and that gives us 128 degrees. All right, moving on to the other part of the question. We have that it's a variance question from port L, that's from this point, ship R and ship T are mapped out. So ship R is 250 kilometers away on a bearing of 65 degrees. And the ship T is 180 kilometers away on a bearing of 148 degrees. We are asked to complete the diagram by inserting angle RLT, that is this angle here. Now to find that angle, we simply need to put in the bearings that we have. So from here, remember we measure bearings from the north line. This angle here is 65 degrees. The bearing is 0, 065, but we write in the angle as 65. And the other bearing is 148. And remember, we, we measure our bearings from the north line. So because that bearing there is 148 degrees from here to here, we can see that this angle is the difference between those. So we have 148 minus 65, and that gives us 83. And so we get our angle. And next we are asked to calculate the distance, RT, between the two ships. We can use that, we can calculate the RT by using the cosine rule. We have two sides and an angle between, which is the criteria for using the cosine rule. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have RT square, this side is equal to the other two sides, that's 250 plus 180 minus 2 times 250 times 180 and the cosine of the angle 83. Punching all of that into your calculator, you should get 83,931.8. And of course, RT would be equal to the root of this 
931.8 and that gives us 289.7 kilometers. All right, moving on. The second part of the question here, or the third part, requires us to find the bearing of T from R. So this is T, and we want to know the bearing of T from R. First thing we need to do then, since we're writing a bearing, is to put in a north line. So let's put in a north line here, because bearings have to be measured from the north line, and the bearing of T measured from R would be this bearing. So we need to find the size of this angle here. Uh, the idea here is that um, angles at a point add up to 360 degrees or measure 360 degrees. So if we can find these two pieces here and subtract, then we can get our answer to be 360 minus these two. So let's see what we can find. Um, first, this was 65 degrees. Let's just double check. Yes, it was 65 degrees. And because this is 65 degrees and north lines are parallel to each other, then we know that these two angles are co-interior angles. And because of that, this one is equal to 180 minus 65, which gives us 115. So that's 115 degrees there. So we can already subtract 115. Now we need to find this part. I'm going to call it x for now. And to find the size of this angle, we have to use either the sine rule or the cosine rule. Both can be used. Uh, we have all three sides of the triangle. So we can use the sine rule. 89.7 we can use the sine rule or the cosine rule in using the sine rule in using the sine rule we simply write it down as um, 180 over sine x is equal to this side we know the side 289.7 over sine 83, do a bit of cross multiplication. So we have 180 sine 83 is equal to 289.7 sine x, which tells us that sine x is equal to 180 sine 83 divided by 289.7. And once you punch that into your calculator, we end up with 0 0.617. And of course, x would be equal to the sine inverse of 0 0.617. And that gives us 38 degrees. So we can then go ahead and subtract our 38 degrees as well. And subtract in here, sub 360 minus 115 minus 38 gives us 207 degrees. And that is the bearing of T measured from R. In using the cosine rule to do it, then we use this form of the cosine rule that is used to calculate the angle. So we'd write the cosine of A. Um, in this case, I'm going to write the cosine of x since we're using um, x as the name of the angle. To be equal to, starting with the other two sides, b square, which is 250 plus 250 square plus 289.7 square minus 180 square all over 2 times 250 times 289.7 and that reduces down to cos x being 0 0.787.
So it's a matter of pun punching it into your calculator. And of course, here x would be the cos inverse of 0 0.787. And that gives us 38 degrees, just the same. And we just apply the same thing here. Subtract our 38 plus 115 from 360. And it gives us a bearing of 207 so degrees. So either tool can be used in this case. And we have found our bearing, 207 degrees. And we have come to the end of our question. I hope you found it useful. And if you did, then please remember to subscribe before you go. Thank you for watching. And best wishes as you continue to prepare for your exams.